8.2, the second section, is modeling and solving linear systems. I'm going to focus mainly on modeling, but we'll also have to solve them as well to look at the graphs. But the graphs of these are quite hard to kind of to solve from because the, the values are quite large. So modeling means basically coming up with the equation that can be used to solve the problem. So coming up with the equations that can be used to solve the problem. I'm going to work through the book. And the first one I'm going to look at is example one on page 434. And it has these two options basically for skiing, for at a ski resort. So your option one charges a one-time fee of $30 and $8 per hour. So the charge, we could call C, is equal to a one-time fee of $30. I'm actually going to put that last. The $8 per hour I'm going to put first. And the one-time one fee of $30 doesn't have any variable associated with it because it's just on its own. It's a one-time thing. The $8 per hour is per hour, so it has that H attached to it. All right, the second one, option B, just charges $14 per hour. So there's no other one-time fee. So the charge is merely $14 per hour. <coughs> Excuse me. So you have both these equations. Um, both of them are in terms of C and H, which is good because I have H along the top, the bottom and C along the top. So this is the cost in money and H is the uh, number of hours. So the first question or the first equation I'm going to use blue for, and I know that it has a y-intercept of 30, so that's where it crosses at the y-axis, which is at 30, and it's got a slope of 8, and remember I can put that 8 over 1. So the slope of 8 over 1 means that at 30, it's going to go up to 38 and over 1. Next it's going to be up to 46 and over 1. Next it's going to be up to 54 and over 1. Next, it's going to be up to 62 and over 1, and then finally 70 and over 1. The next one I will use green for, and it's just got a, it's just got a slope of 14, and that's like 14 over 1, right? So again, you have to kind of do a little bit of guesstimation work, but it's a good idea to go till go put as many points until you have like an actual intersection point, like at 70 and 5. That's a good place to go to. So next one I have is 14, so it's going to go up 14, so from 0 to 14 and over 1. Next it's going to go up another 14, so that would be 28, so up to 28 and over 1. Next one it's going to go another up another 14, so 14 times 3 is 42 and over 1. Next one it's going to go up another 14, and so 14 times 4 is 56, so up to 56 and over 1. And lastly, I'm going to go up another 14, so 14 times 5. 14 times 5 is 50, 70, and over 1. And notice that the two points intersect at this value here. So that if you drew your two lines, which is what we should have done, if we continued them on, you could kind of guesstimate as to see where they would actually meet. Um, the fact that we actually did the points and used the slope, you get an an exact answer. So you don't really have to estimate or guess. We know right away that they meet at the point, and you can see in the book that they meet at the point 5, 70. So that's how they go from the equations to the graph, and then finally the solution, which means that at five hours, they're both going to cost the same amount, and they're both going to cost $70. Next question is example two on page 436 and it's based on bins of grain. So the first bin, the larger bin, holds 45 meters cubed of grain and is emptied at, about, at a rate of one meter cubed per minute. So we're dealing with volume, so we can use V, and we're also dealing with per minute. So volume and minutes. So it holds 45 meters of grain, and it's emptied, which means it's subtracted, at one meter cubed per minute. So you're only going to have two variables. Don't worry about the meters cubed per minute and the meters cubed. You're not going to deal with the meters cubed. That's dealt with in the fact that we're dealing with volume. If I was to convert this to a little, maybe a bit easier of, a, of an equation to look at, I could say that's equal to negative 1m plus 45 because then I know what my slope is, negative 1 over 1. The smaller bin stores 30 meters cubed of grain and it's emptied, so subtracted, 
at a rate of 0 0.5 per minute again. Now, if I was to change this, I would probably say V is equal to negative. Now, 0 0.5 is the same as 1 half, and 30 plus 30. So I have my two equations. Both of them have slopes, and both of them have y-intercepts. I'm going to use blue, and I'm going to use green. So again, we're dealing with large numbers and kind of strange slopes. So what I would probably do is I wouldn't really ask you to graph these. And like I said, in the provincial exam, you're not really going to have to graph these ones anyways. It's mainly interpreting the graphs and figuring out what that intersection point means. So it's going to have a y-intercept of 45. So it goes up to 45. And it's got a slope of negative 1 over 1. So it's going to go down 1 over But look at look at my scale. It's like 10 and, and 10. So let's go down one, down 10 over 10. It's the same slope. So I go down 10 over 10. Down 10 over 10. Down 10 over 10. Down 10 over 10. And then I can't go down 10 over 10 anymore, but I can go down 5 and over 5. So it ends there. And that's what they have in the book too. So it starts up at 45, and it's got to end at 45. We use our ruler. And it goes to about there. Your second one in green, as you can see in the book too, they use their line in red, but it's got a y-intercept of 30, so it starts at 30. It's got a slope of negative 1 over 2, so for every 1 I'm going down, I'm going 2 over. Or, for every 10 I'm going down, I'm going to go 20 over. For every 10 I'm going down, I'm going 20 over. And for every 10 I'm going down, I'm going 20 over. So hopefully that makes sense with what I did there. The line or the dots should line up in a straight line, which they do. Draw my line. And we can see that our intersection point is right there. Now, do we know exactly what that is? Well, maybe. In the book they call it 30, comma 15. So 15 is here, and 30 is right there. So you can see, yeah, okay, I guess that's about right. But it's kind of hard to see exactly. Sometimes you have to kind of estimate. But the main thing is, what does that mean? Okay, well, along the bottom, I have minutes, which is my time. And along the top, I have my volume, which is my meters cubed. So the volume remaining. This means that at 30 minutes, they have the same amount of volume, and it's 15 meters cubed. At 30 minutes, they have the same volume. And that volume is 15 meters cubed. Again, that's the main thing I want you to understand. If you can, if you can come up with the equations for graphs, that's great, because you'll you'll learn in chapter nine how to solve them algebraically. And then if you come up with the answer 30 comma 15, you should know that okay, well that's my x-axis, so that's my x, that's my minutes, that's my y-axis, so that's my y, and that's my volume. Last example. Okay, example three in the book on page 438 deals with movie tickets. And this is a pretty common type of problem. They either have movie tickets or they either have tickets for a football game or something like that. So they tell you that a movie theater charges $11 per adult, $8 per children or seniors, and 240 people attend the ticket, 200 people attend the concert or the whatever it happens to be, in this case movies, and ticket sales were totaling 23.70. So the way that you have to kind of do these, you have to keep the money separate from the amount of people, okay? Or the money separate from your interest rates or whatever it happens to be. In grade 11, they, they take this a step further as well. So let's look at just the money. Well, I know it's $11 per adult, so 11A per adult. And I know that it's $8 per child or senior. And that should be equal to, if I add the money amounts together, what is the money? Okay, well, I have money, I have money. Oh, look, I also have money down here, $2,370. Now I have to deal with the people. Well, what do I have? A movie theater charges $11 per adult. I have children and seniors, and I know that 240 people attended. So if I have adults, I don't know how many there are, plus the amount of children and seniors, I don't know how many there are. But I know total, there has to be 240 people all together. And that's how you would come up with the two equations. 
in the book they have where the people the two people meet and that would be what the solution is to that